Pound for pound sports entertainment, hit the like button, comment below, share, do all of that right now for your boy. If you haven't, hit the subscribe button, hit the subscribe button, join the winning team, hit the thumbs up button, tap the, the thumbs up button, hit the like button, whatever. Do all of that for your boy right now. It's your host, F. Merritt. Um, just a little review from the Million Dollars Worth of Game interview that Gilly the Kid and Wallow did with Terrence Crawford yesterday. It officially dropped. If you haven't seen it, go see it. The link will be in the description. Check it out. Um, number one, first of all, salute to Terrence Crawford. Okay. Uh, future Hall of Famer, Mr. Terrence Bud Crawford, you know, taking time out of his busy schedule to sit down with Willie, uh, uh, Gilly and Wallow. You know what I'm saying? Um, they do great work, great interview. Salute to them guys, too. Million dollars worth of game. Um, the interview starts off good. You know what I'm saying? It starts off great. Uh, you know, I like the way that, that Gilly and Wallow frame their questions. They get right to it. They don't waste no time. Um, but, you know, I'm going to start this review of it off with the Danny Garcia situation and you know it really wasn't a situation but Terrence Crawford kind of used uh, 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 Danny Garcia as an example when people say that uh, uh, Terrence Crawford hasn't fought the top level competition this that and the third and Gilly kind of broke it down better you know and he was saying that sometimes PBC has certain fighters on their division you know they have all the fighters in their division and top rank has all the fighters in their division and it just happened to be that uh pbc had all the welterweights in their division that were considered the best in the world this that and the third and danny garcia you know was just an example that terence crawford used you know and, and you know they you know willie the kid i mean gilly the kid actually got danny garcia on the phone Terrence Crawford did not change his opinion, not whatsoever. He still told the truth, meaning that Danny Garcia at 140 was the man. He was out here, you know, wrecking shit. Excuse my French. But when it came to welterweight, he hasn't beaten anybody. And that is completely true. Absolutely. Danny Garcia didn't beat anybody. He lost to Errol Spitz. He lost to Sean Porter. He lost to Keith Thurman. He didn't really beat the, the top level guys but for whatever reason he's a glorified um best in the world at the welterweight division you know what i'm saying so i mean it really wouldn't even matter if terence crawford would have beat him because then then they're gonna say oh danny garcia didn't beat anybody so you know that that's how he was looking at it he was kind of breaking it down like that sean porter beat danny garcia terence crawford beat uh sean porter sean porter beat kel brook I mean, not no, no, no. Take that back. Sean Porter uh, lost to Sean. Uh, Sean Porter lost to Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. So they had mutual opponents. That's how you measure it. Because some guys are just, you know, they're they're stars, yeah. But if you break it down and really look at who they fought, uh, you know, what they've done at that division compared to Terrence Crawford or who, another fighter, this and the third, you start looking like, okay, well, they didn't really do nothing. But why is why are they considered the best in the world? So that's all that Terrence Crawford was saying. No real shot to Danny Garcia, but hey, it had to be said because you can break this down for a lot of guys. But um, that's how it starts off. You know, it is what it is. And guess what? I don't have a problem with what, what Gilly and Wallow did as far as getting people on the phone. They got Danny Garcia on the phone. They called up Mr. Bosey, you know, uh, uh, Jerron Boots and his father. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, they got Boots on the phone. So that that's a whole nother situation. You know, that they got into as far as, uh, you know, Gilly and Wallow, they from, you know, they from Philadelphia. They riding with Boots. We know Boots is a future. We know Bo Boots is a good fighter. We know Boots wants all the top level guys. We know that. He's the IBF mandatory for Earl Spence's title right now. So he's just waiting to get his shot. He wants these guys. We, you know, you know how it is. We, a young fighter coming up when, when the, the hunter becomes the hunted roles reverse you know this 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 hungry guy comes into the game he wants his shot he wants you know he wants the belt he wants the glory he wants the money this that and the third that's Jerron Boots in this right now okay so um when it comes to that situation Terrence Crawford you know he comes out and says you know these guys duck me and 
and, and Jerron Boots in this, you know, since you talking so highly about him, basically, why did he jump out of my uh, out of the WBO rankings when he could have became my mandatory? You know, they brought up Virgil Ortiz, the same things. And, and, and Jerron Ennis was like, yo, these guys jumped out of the rankings. So guess what? Gilly the Kid calls up Mr. Bosey. You know, Mr. Bosey was like, hey, you know, the business, you know, basically the business and stuff like that. And, you know, saying, hey, we didn't jump out the rankings. And, it, and then at the end of the day, it didn't matter. Actually, no, no, no. It was a whole nother situation where Mr. Bosey was bringing up, um, it, when BLK Prime, when Terrence Crawford signed a deal with BLK Prime, right? Um, it was a situation with Blue Blood Sports TV. Salute to him. He was doing some business at BLK Prime. And uh, Blue Blood called up Mr. Bosey and was like, hey, I'm trying to get you to Terrence Crawford fight. And, you know, they tried to set it up where Mr. Bosey was like, hey, you know, we want the fight, absolutely, but you got to call Mr. Steven Espinoza of Showtime Sports because that's who we do business with. <laughs> that is who we do business with. So you got to go through him. So it's not like someone ducked anybody. It's not like someone said, no, we don't want that fight. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. It's just out of respect. If we're doing business with a network and, and Showtime and Mr. Steven Espinoza, guess what? Let's go through the proper channels. Let's get this fight done. But this is who you need to call, okay? Out of respect. We're not just going to cut these guys out that we've been doing good business with that have been taking care of us just to go jump over here with you guys. And hypothetically, the fight doesn't happen. Now we done messed up. You know, we done look, look disloyal, so to speak, to the guys that have been taking care of us. So we're going to do this the right way, okay? So people at uh, BLK Prime called Mr. Steven Espinoza. And Mr. Steven Espinoza, you know, Allegedly, you know, said, hey, like, do you have Terrence Crawford signed to you? And the, the people at Mr. B, at BLK Prime was like, well, you know, he's on a fight by fight basis. And so so if I'm Steven Espinosa, why would I even talk to you if you don't have him exclusively signed to you? And it's a fight by fight basis then I don't need to talk to you. I can just go talk to Terrence Crawford himself and we can do the deal like that and cut you guys out. That's just that's just business wise. You know, it doesn't make no sense. So at the end of the day, honestly. Honestly, let me, I'm going to be real with you. Jerron Boots Ennis and his father did not duck Terrence Crawford. At the end of that conversation between Terrence Crawford and Mr. Bosey, Mr. Bosey was like, it doesn't even matter. You could have picked us. Okay? You put you picked David Avenesian. He wasn't signed to be okay, Brian. You could have just picked us. You didn't have to pick him. So, I mean, it is what it is. It made it seem like, you know, like, uh, you know, Terrence Crawford wanted an easy touch. Not saying he did, but I'm saying it made it look like that from the conversation. It made, made it look like, okay, you wanted an easy touch. And then, you know, you wanted to get the Spence fight after that. That's cool. That's business. We get that. No problem. You know, and it was a very respectful phone call. You know, it was respectful all the way around. You know, you know, you see like, you know, two respectful guys, two warriors, you know, same type of mentality. It is what it is. But the truth is the truth. The bottom line is the fight didn't happen. Okay. Apparently someone didn't call someone back or something like that. So it didn't happen. It is what it is. But I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be happy if someone's going around spreading false information saying, oh, they dug me or they jumped out the rankings, blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. We're going we're gonna to address that if, if it was me, you know, so that's what Mr. Bozy did. Him and Terrence Crawford came to an understanding that it is what it is. Hung up the phone. Cool. The interview continued. Right. So, um, Terrence Crawford, he started talking about, I think he was talking about Spence at the time. And I believe Boots called because Gilly the Kid called, uh, Jerron Boots Ennis earlier before Mr. Bosey. And Jerron Boots Ennis didn't pick up. But now he calls back. Now, at the same time, Jerron Boots Ennis was asleep. He had three workouts that day. The boy stay in the gym. He stays ready. So Jerron Boutin is calls back, you know, half sleep or whatever, not really knowing what's really going on. But, you know, you know how it is when someone calls you and you're waking up from sleep. You got to kind of like get yourself together. Like, yo, wait, what? You know, so he had to catch up. So anyway, him and him and, uh, you know, Jerron Boutin and Terrence Crawford, they go back and forth on the phone or whatever. Jerron Boutin is, and I'm sure everyone's seen the clip. Jerron Boots and this was saying, hey, we I been asked for that fight. You know, Terrence Crawford was saying, well, when did you ask for this fight? What are you talking about? 
Tell me when. Tell me when. Jerome Bucci just came out and said 2018. I've been wanting that fight since 2018. All the top guys. You know, I've been asking for you, blah, 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 blah. And yes, that's true. He's been asking for a while. Only, I don't know. So, Because one thing is, and something I've learned in boxing, some guys could be talking. Some guys could be actually moving the paperwork behind the scenes. Some guys, some you know, some deals get to these fighters. Some some deals don't get to the fighters. The the paperwork isn't right. The money isn't right. The timing isn't right. Or somebody's, you know, hey, you might be calling me out, trying to clout chase me, or you might not be trying to be serious about the uh, the fight. Or maybe I don't know. It's just it's too many factors. Bottom line is everything happens when it's time for it to happen. Okay. But like I said, Terrence Crawford and Jerron Buchanan, they were going back and forth on the phone. It was respectful. It was respectful. But you could tell, like, yo, I can definitely, it, that fight is going to happen. That fight is going to happen down the line. It is what it is. And to me, that could be a passing of the torch type of fight. It's either the old dog, still the, you know, the king of the hill, or, hey, time to pass that torch down to the young dude. That's it. But, you know, go check out the interview when it comes to these two situations, as well as the Danny Garcia situation with Terrence Crawford talking about PBC and their fighters, this, that, and the third. Um, the Errol Spence uh, conversation. You know, now at the time of this interview, the official announcement has not had not been made yet for Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. So kind of speaking like, OK, well, we don't know nothing. We're not saying no date, blah, 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 blah. We don't, you know, blah, blah, blah. But as far as the actual fight, talking about the build up and stuff like that and everything that has happened. Terrence Crawford talked about Earl Spence and. I mean, it's not nothing that we haven't heard before when it comes to Terrence Crawford talking about Earl Spence. We know, you know, these these guys, it's time for Undisputed. We know that you guys have been talking on the phone, trying to figure the deal out. We already knew all that. We we, we got all that. To me, that's not, that's not even a big part of the video, honestly. You know, but I'm happy. To me personally, I'm happy the fight's finally done. Okay? I'm happy it's done July 29th. Let's get it. Las Vegas, T-Mobile, all that talking is over with. I don't care anymore. It's time to work. Time to put in the work training camps. Time to go. I'm excited. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Now, the Charlo situation is very interesting. Okay? Because I, I don't think, I mean, some, I know some people hurt and knew about it. The back and forth, Terrence Crawford and Charlo. But Terrence Crawford, Terrence Crawford really does feel a way about Charlo. He was kind of explaining that to, to Gilly the Kid. Like, yo, Charlo, you know, always been cool with his family blah 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 but when it came time for me and spence to fight or you know me and spence going back and forth charlo just jumped out the window just like oh uh earl spence gonna knock you out and blah 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 and terrence crawford was like yo just chill like even if that's your stable mate even if that's your homeboy we get that but you know tr you know be be in a situation do it treat the situation like a adrian broner like hey man you know I, I like, you know, you might, you might do Terrence Crawford, you might do Spence, but I'm more closer to Spence. And, you know, I think he's going to beat you. But he's not. Adrian Broner wasn't all on social media being disrespectful to Terrence Crawford like Charlo is. Charlo talking way too much. Like, he's talking like he's going to fight Terrence Crawford. You know, so that's what kind of rubbed Terrence Crawford the wrong, wrong way and kind of ruffled his feathers. And at the end of it, Gilly the Kid was like, is 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 Jamil Charlo gonna have to see you? Terrence Crawford was like, yes. So I mean, hey, that's a fight that I I would love to see, Terrence Crawford and and Jamil Charlo. Some people are gonna say Jamil Jamil Charlo's too big for uh, Terrence Crawford because you know Charlo fights at fifty four. You know he really should be fighting at 60, 68, But you know he fights at fifty four. It is what it is. Undisputed champion. He is the man at one fifty four. Um. I don't know, man. I, I like the build up between that fight as well. It's going to be, whew, if that fight happens, oh my God, that's going to be crazy too. But I just think it's Terrence Crawford feeling disrespected because you out here running your mouth a little bit too much, Charlo. That's what Terrence Crawford is saying. That's what Ch Terrence Crawford thinking like, yo, it's getting real disrespectful, you know. But as far as the overall um, review of the interview with Gilly the Kid and Wallow, Million Dollars Worth of Game. I like the interview. It showed Terrence Crawford personality, man. He a fun guy. He's cool. He's an intense guy. Um, showed he's, you know, he he, he, he he is a good personality, man. A lot of people don't see that from Terrence Crawford a lot. Or, or, you know, they make it seem like he's just a boring type of dude. Or 
So salute to him, you know, salute to Gilly the Kid, Wallow, man, great interview. Check it out. Like I said, the link will be in the description below. I enjoyed it. Um, you know, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, once again, hit the like button, smash the like button, this, that, and the third. It's your host, F Merritt, Pound for Pound Sports Entertainment. I'm out.